Hey guys, all right, let's get this party started. I'm super excited to show you some cool machining of a big giant mold I'm making for the wings on Scrappy. And I have got a bunch more Dracos I'm giving away. So let's get that out there. So these little things helps aviation. Uh, I'm gonna come up with more ways to do little things. It seems like your support is so great. I wanna give it back. Oh, on this wing. <laughs> I'm getting distracted. Yeah, I, I wasn't paying attention. Jeez, Rick. Um, trying to say thank you for all your support. Um, this wing, I am so excited to show you what I'm doing with it. And I am gonna show you the leading edge slat. Um, there's some secrets I'm gonna leave to another video, but right now, yes, I do have a leading edge slat on Scrappy, and it's large, it's big, and we're gonna cut molds and show you how to make a slat, how I'm gonna make it, so you guys know the drill. Let's get at it, we have a lot of work to do. Back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. So for those of you who ask, that's what we use. 
Camworks on the SolidWorks platform is doing everything you see. So there you go. You guys know the drill. This tool that grabs the bit has 20,000 pounds of pull force to pull it up in and lock it so the tolerance stays perfect while you machine. All right guys, so this tool right here is for aligning so I can set the X and Y point in the computer off a corner and get this part referenced to the machine as how I have it bolted to the table. So this goes in and acts like a bit, a machine head, and you can see as I bend this, you can see it moves and I can turn it till this comes around and reaches zero, which it's actually almost at zero now. I gotta back it off this a little. But I check it on this side, check it on this side, but what's really cool is it also goes up and down. So this same point, I can bring down on top of the part, reference it, get the computer numbers off of it, and then zero it out to machine this. So we check it here, here, and here, and put it in the computer and reference the part as it's bolted. So we're almost ready to hit go. Okay, you know what one of the coolest parts about building fun stuff like this is when your kids get better at it than you are. <laughs> this is Kaysen. Kaysen is Mark's second oldest son. And he is the one that's been learning how to run this new machine of ours. And uh, it's just awesome watching him write code and adjust as we go. So I'm lucky to have him. When the younger kids are beating you, that's awesome. <laughs> Back to work. at 20,000 RPM. We have a three flute ball end mill and it's traveling at 300 inches per minute. So if you do the quick math, every single inch on every single pass has 200 cuts. I don't know why anyone would want to know that, but when you're watching a machine run, you do dumb things. <laughs> That's work. Okay guys, I'm just about done finished sanding this. I've gone through it with an 80 grit, really light. It, we have so many passes on the machine with a ball end mill. We're actually doing, on the last final clean pass, we were doing 1 16th of an inch step on every pass. And it went for a lot longer than we originally planned because when we went an eighth of an inch step, there was just the tiniest little ridge. So we went ahead and doubled up on it. So it ran for hours and hours on end on the cleanup pass. And so I had almost no ridge lines on it at all, really smooth. So I've hit it with an 80 grit. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it one more time with a 300 grit, real light. It's, uh, I can't feel any ridges, any bumps at all. I'm really happy with it. So the next process after I do another couple hours of sanding on it is simply to wrap the whole thing in carbon fiber. This is a high density foam, but it's very thin. Uh, up here it's plenty strong. But right through here is where the new leading edge device comes and almost touches. So it's only a sixteenth of an inch thick. If I took my finger, I could literally punch a hole right through the thin spot. I've, I've done this so that now I can wrap it in carbon fiber, give it its strength as a mold. Then I can put wax on it and pull parts off of it. 
and the parts will be able to open up and pop off the top of the mold and they'll come and naturally watch go all the way back to within that 16th of an inch, that really thin spot through the middle. And then I bond that and, and uh, pinch that together so I have an entire new leading edge without multiple pieces being clamped together. It's all one part with one glue joint at the back. So <sighs> I'm winded. It's been a long set, a lot of sanding all morning, but we're done. One more round of a couple hours. Carbon fiber, you know the drill. Back to work. I'm just putting in little edges right here since the carbon fiber, I gotta wrap this in carbon for strength to make a mold, but it's hard to get it into the tight corners. So I'm just putting a little fillet 45 corner in there on both sides. We'll lay some carbon, back to work. All right, guys, it feels like it's been a lot longer day than it's really been. Uh, we started early this morning. It's only seven o'clock at night, but we just, once you start, you have to just keep going until it's done. So uh, I'm ready for some lunch and then I'm going to jump upstairs, do some more carbon, uh, more drafting for the wings. What I've got on here is just two layers of carbon fiber. Now I could have done fiberglass for sure, but I had a really heavy mat here and had a really thin layer and the thickness I wanted, I didn't have enough of to do it. I certainly wasn't gonna wait just to save a teeny bit of money, oh, maybe a couple hundred bucks, but I didn't wanna wait several days for the fiberglass to get here, so we did it out of carbon fiber anyway. So tomorrow, we'll sand it, a couple different grits down to a nice fine, polish it, then we can wax it and we'll pull the first part on it. So I'm gonna go eat, then I'm gonna get back to work. Tomorrow, we'll get back on this. All right, guys, it's time to give away some Dracos. We're gonna make a couple of quick phone calls, see if anyone even answers with all the telemarketing these days. What? For those of you who have bought Dracos, there have been so many of you, I'm gonna give away a bunch of them. So this is gonna become regular. So all of you who bought Dracos, a little bit helps me get more Dracos to give away to people who maybe can't afford them or wouldn't get one until later. And so thank you, all of you who are doing that. So if you buy a Draco through mypenny.com, some of that revenue goes to buy more Dracos to give away and you automatically get entered to win another Draco. But if you can't afford to pick one up right now or you just uh, feel like they might be a little bit out of your price range and you still wanna win one, you don't have to buy anything. You can just get on mypenny.com and enter and I'm giving away a bunch of other Dracos that way. So there's lots of ways to win free Dracos. I'm also giving away hats, t-shirts, Mike Patey gear, but get back to work, anything about aviation. Um, so thank you all for sharing the love of aviation, getting a Draco. We're gonna go call a few people who have won. This is gonna be regular. There's so many people that are helping contribute to get Dracos to more people that uh, we're gonna have to do this a lot. So let's go call a couple right now and get back to work. So I'm excited to call the first of many, many people that are gonna win a Draco. And I think this is James Brown. So let's see if anyone answers their phone from an unknown number. <laughs> um, this is fun. <laughs> Hello? Hello, who am I talking to? James? Well, awesome. You're exactly who I'm trying to find. My name is Mike Patey. How are you? Mike Patey? Yes. I'm good. How are you, man? Good. Hey, uh, I'm just calling because you got selected by one of my assistants, Josh, to win a free Draco. <laughs> no way, Mike. That's yeah. awesome. Yes, sir. <laughs> So, um, uh, did you uh, did you buy a Draco? Were you one of the free entries? How how did we find your number? We've been randomly selecting, so I'm just curious. Well, I jumped on it when I saw you know you posted that video uh, that you had those made, and I went ahead and jumped in and bought one right away. Oh. Uh, and of course, I get another one. Like you mentioned, you might crash it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yes, the past can hurt. <laughs> you would bring. <laughs> I tried to set up a time for you to meet with us for a surprise for our anniversary, and you ended up going out of the country or something. 
Oh, I remember you. You live you live somewhere nearby, like on the west coast here somewhere? Yeah, we're in Hartsburg, Idaho. I remember you. I for you were gonna surprise him. Well I didn't I obviously didn't get that to work out. Where did I go? I don't even remember. I don't remember either, but we've been huge fans for a long time. <laughs> oh, awesome. So, you know, Mike, we lived in Utah there in Farmington for quite some time and unknown to myself. You know, I, you know, back in the, uh, the legacy kit days, you know, uh, I was looking at those and dreaming about them. Here you guys are building them and flying them and racing them. So I didn't, didn't realize I had been following you guys for quite some time. So it's kind of fun to have it come full circle. Wow, like this, this would have been before I did any YouTube videos at all then. All right guys, well I'm gonna let you go for the night. Thank you so much for, for sharing aviation with me and, and watching the videos and getting a Draco and, uh, and I just, I'm so excited to hear you got a family of four and you're all silly enough to watch this knucklehead. So you guys just made my day. Able to do what you're doing, it's an inspiration to all of us. Thank you, I appreciate that. Well, awesome, you guys. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go work on Scrappy with a big ear-to-ear -ear grin all night because of this. So, th <laughs> thank you so much, and watch for a big fat box from me. I uh, appreciate it, thank you, Mike. Thank you, so much. you bet. Take care, guys. See you, kids. Um, hey, kids. Hey, all you kids, if you're still listening, stay up late, make lots of noises, give your parents a, a little, uh, a little bit of grief, and they'll still love you anyway. I'm just letting you know. You can kind of. No, <laughs> Oh. oh yeah, and then and then don't forget get back to work. <laughs> All right guys, love you guys, have a great night. Bye. Boy, could you have any more feel goods than a family like that? I made my day. All right, let's get him a Draco. Call a few more people. <laughs> Back to work. All right, guys. The best part about finishing a mold is opening it <laughs> because it's satisfying. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> wow, man, that is awesome. Boy, it's gonna take. Very little prep to get ready to lay apart on this. Wow. The mold's almost ready. We just finished about oh, three or four hours of sanding. Uh, I couldn't be any happier with it. It kind of looks like there's little imperfections in it if you took a close look at it, but there isn't. It's just the highs and lows of where resin was a little thicker or thinner. But I chased the whole thing I'm using sandpaper and holding it like that and chasing it down with sandpaper and then all the arc and all the way on the inside I use a rounded sanded block. So it completely evens it out. But if you take a look wet, you kind of get an idea of what that looks like. Um, I couldn't have any straighter as a starting point for a mold. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it off, um, clear coat it, then I'll polish and buff the clear coat and then it'll be ready to make parts off of just by putting wax on it. So a couple more hours and we'll pull our first part back to work. All right guys, so what we did, we got the part finished, the mold done. I put five layers of a brush on wax. You brush it on, let it dry, brush it on, let it dry. Got five layers of wax on it. Then I just put four layers of carbon fiber on top of that. And then I, I've split the slat on the front of the wing into sections where they connect so that I have no seams on any of it and you won't see any carbon line because I'm using enough carbon to not have any overlap anywhere. So it's one piece all the way over, four layers thick, some peel ply, squeegeed it on really tight. I'm now gonna take some foam, put it over top of it, a vacuum bag, tape it down, hook up a vacuum and suck it tight to get what's left of the resin back out of it. So, uh, that's it. We got a lot more work to do. It's starting to get a little warm on me, so you know the drill. That's work. Hi, Ron. Hello. <laughs>
We're making wings. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I never I never get to film. <laughs> I'm making wings. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Need a little light trimming. Look at that. Clean release. Only wax left behind. Wow. Wow. Holy crap, that is so lightweight. Feel that. Oh, unbelievable. I love carbon fiber. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> That's amazing. I'm really happy. I think the plan now is just every morning come in, knock one of these out, sand, and prep the one we pulled off. You can see the one we pulled off from before. Well, we've got it all dirty, but it came out really good. So part two, back to work. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out on this video with me. I'm so excited to show you the wings. Um, I wanted to dive right into the wings, and I got so much more to show you. There are so many things I've been doing to these wings for so long, but I only had them in the computer. So I'm excited to build the part with you live, kind of where I really am today in Scrappy, which is what's happening now as we're diving into the wings. But I'm gonna go back and I will show you the computer engineering, the drafting, everything that I've been doing this entire year on the wing, but only computer based because I wanted to show you the computer design and the actual product in the same video. So thanks for being patient <laughs> and thanks for poking fun because I have no wings on my wingless aircraft. And uh, I really appreciate you guys following along. If you haven't already, maybe like, subscribe, share this with friends. Maybe you can join us in this crazy scrappy build. And also coming up real soon, I took a break to do a little bit on the wings. I'm gonna quickly paint the cowlings. <laughs> get them on the plane, and then wrap it around this airport and have some fun with it. So that's coming up right away. Come back, I'll see you next time. Back to work. <laughs>